This is another one of the pop culture roadshow things where I go over some of the stuff that I've collected uh, and talk a little bit about them and see if I can't learn something. So the first one I have, this is a weird thing from the 70s, 70s I believe, Archie Bunker's grandson, Joey Stivic. It's a doll. It's a baby doll. Archie Bunker had a grandson. Its name was Joey Stivic. And to capitalize, like, how do we make toys for kids to buy for Archie Bunker, the show that all kids hated? The toy itself touts itself as this is a drink and wet doll and is a physically correct male. And they weren't kidding. So this is a physically correct male doll. Um, it being in the package with a plastic over its head, kind of disturbing to me. It came with diapers, a bib, and a bottle. You basically put fill the bottle with water, put it in its mouth, and then that water would trickle down into the diapers, and then it'd be like it wet itself. Aw, adorable. You set it on the floor there. See, that's how that's how I would take care of it. You just set the baby on the floor. So this was by Ideal. Company's no longer around. Uh, one of the other things they did that's very popular was the Betsy Wetsy. So it looks like they just basically took the Betsy Wetsy and made a male version and did it with this. Last thing that they did was the Rubik's Cube. And then they went out of business, even though it was a huge hit. Like, why would they go out of business after that? But apparently they did. So that is that. Super Grover. So this is one of the newer versions of Super Grover. There was a weird time where they started making dolls that were, you couldn't do anything with them. They had like one, I remember there was like a, do you remember there was a bug, I'm talking to Stu off screen here. There was a Bugs Life toy line and there was like, uh, remember the ants? And they had all those toys where they were just like stiff and they were more like statues rather than toys. Well, you know what that one does? You like press the button and fly it through the air. It's like, woo, I'm flying. And then when you set it down, it's like. I oh. didn't know that it did that. Okay, yeah. so it does more. I thought it just did this. Hello, everybody. It's a Thai Super Grover 2.0. Up, up, and away. Going up, going down. Going up, going down. Okay, yes, I did enjoy that. All right, thank you for setting me straight, Stu. Super Grover. Okay, that's enough of you. Let's turn that up. Super Grover was introduced in the 70s. Actually, it was proposed by one of the writers for Sesame Street. And the costume, uh, he was a costume designer or something like that for some other children's program. But basically, he took one of the props from that, slapped it on the head of the Grover, and said, let's make him a superhero. And he had the cape and stuff. There was a NASA mission where what they did is they took a bunch of pop culture items with them up into space and one of the items was uh grover's cape they took that and then apparently went on sesame street and gave it back to him and said your cape has now been in space i don't know why i keep getting viewmasters viewmasters themselves you think they're neat you know okay i've got tons of these things sitting around they're fine. You got lots of these things sitting around. They're fine. They're fun. You get them, and it's like there's nothing else you can do with them. And then I'm like, well, hey, remember the projectors? Those were great. And they talked, and you had special kind of things that came with them. So I got this one. There's a projector for it. Tried it out. They never work. This is why I need to stop getting these. So I plugged this one in. Uh, we had to pry the talking thing in there. Now I can't get it out. Basically, we tried to do it. We turned it on. We got it to light up. Uh, the talking part was really blah, 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 blah. So it didn't work uh, all that well. And now it's stuck in there. So yay. Because I have all these Viewmaster talking real things. And this is what I'm talking about. So on one side, they've got like this little plastic record thing that's supposed to play. But it spins around freely. So I don't know how it knows which frame it's supposed to be with. And then I had this other one, super cool. This also came in the box. Now this is the talking Viewmaster. So that other one was a projector. This one is an actual Viewmaster, but it has a speaker built into it. It's like this. So you're actually supposed to be able to look at it 
and use it. So I turned it on. It doesn't have batteries in it anymore, but otherwise I would turn it on and you'd hear it. And again, it worked. I could see stuff, but then when it would play, it was just bro, 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 right? So what's the point? Why, why do it? So that is, uh, that's why I need to stop getting these. So now I have two of them and I haven't learned my lesson. And I got a bunch of Viewmasters that go with them. They were introduced in, these projector thingies were introduced in like 1970. And oddly enough, they had a bunch of Sesame Street and Muppet ones. I like that, how he waved. I had those when I was a kid. Did you? The Sesame Street ones, yeah. Yeah, and those ones, a lot of them came with their own players. Like back then, you would buy a Sesame Street actual Viewmaster thing. These ones are at, from the 70s. Come in this tube, and it's all packed and stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, that's what those do. Uh, they well, what they do is not work. So stop getting them, Tom. I will, Tom. Thanks, Tom. So that's all that I got. Talk to you later. Let's see. And I'm turning off now. There we go. Oops.